Here's the derivation of the moment generating function for a geometric random variable. Before starting, however, here is a result that we've used in the past and we will use here as well, stated explicitly. So 1 plus r plus r squared, etc., is equal to 1 over 1 minus r, and that is true whenever the absolute value of r is less than 1. So here's the derivation of the moment generating function for x having a geometric distribution with parameter p. By definition, for any random variable, the moment generating function m of t is the expected value of e to the tx. Now since the geometric distribution is a discrete distribution, we know we will have a summation here rather than an integral. And furthermore, because its support goes from 0 to infinity, those will be the limits on the summation. And basically, this e to the tx gets copied right there. And we put the probability mass function right here. Now, p can come out front of this summation because it is a constant. So it appears right here. Summation still goes from 0 to infinity. When you have e to the tx multiplied by 1 minus p to the x, since both of these are raised to the x power, this can be written as e to the t times 1 minus p, that whole quantity raised to the x power. Now we come back to this result that we started with up top here. And you will notice that this is a summation from 0 to infinity of this quantity right here, which is playing the role of r raised to the x power. So that means that this will converge to, again, the p just gets transferred down here to the numerator, 1 over 1 minus that common ratio, 1 minus p e to the t, whenever the absolute value of that common ratio is less than 1. Now to do a moment generating function properly, we have to make sure that this function exists in a neighborhood of 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop the absolute value marks. The reason I can do that is 1 minus p always lies between 0 and 1, and e raised to the t power is always a positive quantity. So those absolute value marks can just get simply dropped. Next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides of this inequality by 1 minus p. And again, 1 minus p is always between 0 and 1. So that will not change the sense of the inequality. So we are to there. And the last thing I want to do is take the natural log of both sides of that inequality. And we get t less than the natural log of 1 over 1 minus p. So since we have t less than the natural log of some quantity here, which is greater than 1, that means this right-hand side of the inequality is a positive number. So if I want this thing to exist in a neighborhood of 0, all I have to do is choose some positive number that is less than that quantity, just say half of it, and it does exist in a neighborhood about 0. So we then say, therefore, the uh, moment generating function exists in a neighborhood about t equals 0. And therefore, we have a moment generating function. And this is it.